Part 1. Let the Games Begin. Chapter 1. The day the Regalia Games truly began for me started out like any other, with me dancing, dancing, dancing as fast as I could. Move! Move! A stern voice barked out. You're falling behind the music! I grimaced, but I quickened my pace, my bare feet slapping against the wooden floor, my arms sweeping up, down, and back again, my fingers flexing, twisting, and pointing. Loud, lively music trilled through the air, and I did my best to match my movements to the rapid beat. Arms up! That stern voice barked again. Fingers wide, toes pointed. Now hop! Hop, hop, hop! All the bloody hopping made me feel like a bunny stumbling around a field, but I did as commanded. The music cranked up, singing out even louder and faster, and I continued to flail my arms and legs, desperately trying to keep up with the relentless rhythm. I had been dancing on and off for more than an hour, and exhaustion slowed my feet and dragged down my arms. I turned my head to ask my torturer if we could finally stop the session, but she barked out another command. Don't look at me. Look at yourself. See your mistakes. If she saw my sour expression, she didn't care. So I focused on my own reflection again. I was dancing in front of the floor-to-ceiling mirrors that lined one wall of the dance hall. My shoulder-length black hair was pulled back into a low ponytail, and my normally pale cheeks were now tomato red from my prolonged exertion. I was wearing my usual royal blue tunic, along with black leggings, although I'd removed my black boots and socks. This dance was traditionally performed barefoot, and the parquet floor felt as cool and smooth as glass under my hot, sweaty toes. Even though I was supposed to be watching my form, I couldn't help but glance around at everything else in the mirror. The large cavernous hall was made of gleaming golden wood. White crown moldings shot through with silver leaf ringed the ceiling, which boasted three round crystal chandeliers that resembled glittering oversized snowballs. The flora stones embedded in the chandeliers blazed with white light, all the better to show off my many mistakes and all the ogres around the room. Fierce, snarling ogre faces were carved into the wooden walls and much of the crown molding, while silver ogre figurines dangled from the bottoms of the chandeliers like wind chimes, although there was no breeze to make them merrily tinkle tinkle together. Still more snarling ogre faces were painted in deep forest greens and bright scarlets on the floor squares, as though the entire room were one enormous game board. I was dancing on top of several faces, and I kept expecting the creature's gleaming white teeth to erupt out of the wood and bite my heels every time my feet hit the floor. I was dancing alone, although several musicians were sitting in the corner, playing, playing, playing their flutes and violins as fast as possible. My torturer was lounging in a plush green velvet chair a few feet away. Out of the corner of my eye, I spotted a flash of silver zooming toward me. I grimaced again, knowing what was coming next, but I didn't move out of the way. Thump! The blunt end of a silver cane stabbed into my right thigh. The poke wasn't quite hard enough to bruise, but it was definitely forceful enough to get my full attention. I staggered to the side, but I didn't stop dancing. That would only make her poke me again even harder. Don't let your mind wander or your gaze, she snapped. You must focus on the dance and the dance alone. I opened my mouth to snipe that it was hard to focus. Sample complete. Ready to continue?